What's up guys? So, so many of you ask me, what's the best ski resort out there? Where should you go? What should you do? How is this ski resort? Should I go to this ski resort? And it's hard, hard to answer all of that. I don't know and a lot of this stuff is biased. So I came up with a list and we're gonna rate ski resorts by this list. All of them that we've been to or we're gonna go to after we've been there. And so by after reviewing resorts with this system, we'll then know what's the best resort to go to. What resort has, what are you looking for? You know what I'm saying? So if you need a resort and it, you, you want lodging, but they don't have good lodging, then you know to go maybe to a different resort, things like that. So I'm really excited to, to do this first ever resort review. And on this one, we're gonna be reviewing big snow in New Jersey. So this summer we went to Big Snow and it, it was a super sick time. So I'm really excited to, re to review this um, whole ski resort. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna give 10 topics a score from zero to 10. Zero being not apical, one being absolutely terrible, five being average, and 10 being best in the world, best you can get. Uh, so that's how we're gonna re rate these resorts. And I'm really excited to get into the rating. We're gonna start off with lift ticket prices. How expensive was it to go there? Was it fair? Was it a good price? And honestly, I think Big Snow was actually a pretty fair lift ticket price to get there. Now they, they sell days in two hour sessions. A, a day of riding is only two hours, but they offer this six pack option where it's six ride days, but you can actually, they go by sessions and you can do two sessions in a row or three sessions in a row. So you can end up riding the four to six hours that you normally ski or snowboard. That's what I ended up doing when I was out there. And with the six pack, it comes to about $10 an hour, which is actually a pretty fair price when you think about it. If you don't go the six pack route, it's a little bit more expensive. It was one of the most interesting and unique lift ticket experiences of my life. You had to like hand scan it and it didn't really make any sense and they're charging you by sessions and if you don't keep track of your session, you can get charged for another session and it's kind of a mess. So th the way it operated was kind of a mess. The price was fair. So rating the lift tickets, I would give it, even with all the chaotic and it being super confusing, about a six because it was actually a very fair price to go ski slash snowboard in big snow. The next topic is gonna to be ease of access. How easy was it to get to Big Snow? I live in Colorado and I wanted to go snow, snowboard the snow dome in the summer. How hard was that? And it was actually super easy. We flew into Newark, New Jersey. The plane ticket was super cheap and we got there, a buddy picked us up and the snow dome is only 20 minutes from the airport. So not only were we able to fly in that day and go ride that afternoon, but we rode the day we were leaving in the morning and we flew out in the afternoon and we were able to rip it. So ease of access was pretty awesome. They do have a parking garage right next to the, the snow dome, which was super nice. So you're able to park right next to it. And so ease of access, I'd honestly give it about a seven. I thought it was actually super fair, especially for a trip to be able to fly in the same day and get on the snow, no issues. It's boom, 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 you're there, which is awesome. The next will be parking. So when I showed up, the parking was completely free. There's a ton of it. They have all these parking garages everywhere. You literally park right next to the snow dome. It was really cool, but it was only free because it was around coronavirus and all that stuff. So if it wasn't, I think it was $25 to park there, which is pretty expensive. And it's no matter what, if you want to park there, it's $25. There's no days off, anything like that, other than obviously a pandemic. So that's, that's a little high and it sucks you gotta do it every single time and there wasn't an option for free parking. So rating the parking, I would give the parking about a four because it, it was almost average other than the fact that there wasn't a free option. So that puts you around about a four.
Now with lodging, they don't offer lodging. There's not a, there's not a lodge there. There's not a place that you can stay. There are hotels surrounding the sports complex or whatever they call it. And if you do do that, do not stay at the American stay. That was like the worst experience of our lives. We had to like return our room, it was a disaster. And we ended up staying in like a Holiday Inn that was nearby. There are hotels nearby it, but it doesn't offer any lodging. So that's a, that's a zero on the rating scale. Now for the lifts, you're in the snow dome, you gotta get up to the top of the snow somehow. And thankfully they did have a chairlift, a four person chairlift. It took about four and a half minutes to get up to the top, which is actually super quick and really awesome. If it ever got kind of busy or, or kind of filled up, they had a platter on the right hand side of the chairlift that they would run um, occasionally, especially when it got busier towards the end of the day, which was really cool to see. And then on the bunny hill, they had two magic carpets. So honestly, they had four technically lifts in the snow dome, which is, I I thought was incredible. I didn't think they were gonna have, I they were gonna have one, and they ended up having four options to get up the snow. So I would honestly give that about a seven on the scale because it was a quick chairlift, it didn't take long. Uh, and if it ever got backed up, they always turned on another option to get you up to the top. And like, it was really awesome. So uh, good job, uh, Big Snow with the chairlifts. Now the next topic is a little tricky because we're gonna cover the run slash the terrain as well as the snow. And obviously the snow depends on the time of the year, but I mean, I could break it down. Sometimes it could just be bad grooming. So conditions slash the runs, it's a snow dome. And honestly, it's one of the smaller snow domes that I have seen. So it did, was not the craziest experience when it comes to run. They actually had one run. Bunny Hill, and even the way they had the Bunny Hill set up, it was a little uh, interesting. So if I had to rate the run slash snow quality was actually incredible in there for being man-made dome snow. Like I got in there and I was like, dude, this stuff is so sick. It wasn't very icy, it was really good. I could do some really good turns in the snow dome. So I would give it for snow, I'm gonna kind of cheat. Snow would be, snow was good but the, the runs, whatever, has to be a, like a two for the options for run. You're in a dome, it's a two, sorry. Sorry guys, it was sick, it was just a two. the park though so half the snow dome is a park you show up half's a run half's a park and honestly i think they killed it for the park they had two jump options one was kind of small one was kind of big the jump wasn't built the best i felt like the first day like the first day i showed up the jump was all out of whack and if you hit the bigger side you can never make it to the sweet spot so you ended up wanting to hit the smaller jump but then Towards the end, they figured out the bigger jump and we were able to get 360s on the jumps. We were able to get a backflip on the jumps. The rail, the, they had a flat rail set up and a down box. So they had beginner and intermediate level features. Obviously nothing expert in there, um, but they had like a volcano. I think they had about 10 features in when I showed up, which is incredible for a snow dome. And for, for what you were ripping every four laps, like it was so sick and I was able to work on so many tricks and do all this stuff. So honestly, I would give their park for what they had and what they worked with and what they put in the effort they put into the park about a six. I think the park was super sick, above average. So good job guys on the, the park. Now we're getting to the food. So it's not a zero, but it's definitely a one. So they had a concession stand. I went there and I was like, I'm just gonna get anything they have. Like, I'm sure it's not that expensive. It's in the middle of New Jersey where everything is accessible. So there shouldn't be resort prices, anything like that. And it was definitely resort prices, $12 for like this waffle thing. I go up to the window and I'm like, hey, can I just get like the s'mores waffle? And he's like, we don't have the marshmallow fluff. And I'm like, okay. Can I get the cookie dough, whatever? And he's like, we don't have the cookies or whatever. I'm like, well, do you have stuff? And he's like, oh, we're out of a lot of the stuff to make anything. I just make something up for you though and still charge me $12 for it. And I was like, dude, and it was terrible. Not gonna lie, it was like a waffle. Like, It was terrible, one, on the food. So if you're gonna go there, it's a mall. 
everything was closed because of COVID, but when the mall's like fully going and there's a food court, go to the food court for food. Do not go to their little window concession thing. Plus your riding is based off your time and everything like that. And then you have to buy the food in the dome. So it's not outside. So you can't like tag your, your time, like pause your time and get food. You have to be technically snowboarding to get the food. It's a mess. The food, terrible one, one on the food. I would give it a zero if I could, but it's available. So it's a one. The next topic is the views slash scenery and I think you gotta give that a zero, right? We're in a dome, you can't really see anything. Like, it's just walls. They did at the bottom have like a like a build, like a a fake lodge type feeling thing. And they had some trees down there, but like up at the top, they didn't get, they didn't try it at all. So, but it's at the end of the day, it's walls, it's whatever. And we could give them a one because they tried, but they don't, it's a dome, there's no scenery. It's a zero, sorry. Sorry, Big Snow. So the last two factors are kind of uh, personal experience, how it was and everything. But at the end of the day, I'm a person and how I feel about it is how you guys are gonna feel about it. So uh, the last, uh, second to last one is fun. Was it fun? I had a blast. I, I, I had so much fun in the snow dome, going out there in the summer, getting lap after lap after lap, hitting the park, ripping the park, doing some turns, like not having to wait, you could just you could push yourself so much. I had so much fun. I did four days in a row in the snow dome, riding over four hours almost each day, and I had a blast. I, I, I could have kept riding. I could go back today and ride. It was a ton of fun. So on a fun factor, I'll give it a seven. I thought it was a super fun resort. Not the most fun I ever had in my entire life, but middle of the summer, wanting to go rip, super fun. Give it a seven. I kind of already answered the last question or the thing or whatever. Would I go back? Of course I'd go back, man, that was super fun. I think that's important to, when you think about a ski resort or a place, they cost a lot of money to go to. So would you want to go back and spend that money? Was it worth it? Uh, I totally think the money I spent to take my family out there uh, and experience big snow to snowboard in, was it September? Yeah, it was September. To snowboard in September was, a, was honestly an incredible time, incredible experience. I'd give that once again a seven. Uh, I thought it was a good time. I would go back, but only in the summer. This is not a, a winter destination for me. So I'm gonna be spending that type of money. I'm gonna be going to a bigger ski resort, something with more variety, better runs, some scenery, and definitely better food because that was not a great um, food option. So on our rating scale of 10 categories, going from zero to 10 with an option of getting 100 for your max score, Big Snow got a 47. And for being a snow dome, that doesn't actually sound terrible. It almost hit the 50% mark, but that doesn't mean, once again, I said seven points that I would go back to Big Snow. I had a really good time. But when we're gonna rate best resorts that we've ever been to, whatever, this is gonna be how we're gonna do it. And I feel like these are genuine responses and answers and everything like that. And I'm gonna do my best for that. So right now, our first resort reviewed, or whatever you wanna call it, is a 47. So this was the first of the ski resort reviews. Now we have footage and we've been to and experienced so many ski resorts. So I can film and bust out a bunch of these videos. So let me know in the comments down below, was this a sick video? Is this a sick idea? Did you need this video? Were you looking for this video? Did I help you with your trip? Uh, obviously ask more questions too. If you're like, yo, I got a question on this. Now with the lodging and things like that, just not, I'm not TripAdvisor. I don't know prices. I don't know things like that. I just know my personal experiences. So I'll do my best to help you. But at the end of the day, this is what I'm doing. So uh, use the resources that Google provides you to help plan your trip or book your trip. But I hope this video helped you. If you want me to go to new resorts or resorts that you want to go to and have me do these review videos and stuff like that, you please help support the channel. You can do that by liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel or snagging some evolution merch we have hoodies t-shirts long sleeves face masks hats this cool snowboarder hat is new uh the evolution stickers is a great way to support throw that on your helmet let people know you're part of team huck house any way that you can support the channel guys allows me to go on these trips experience these resorts and these things and now i found a way that i feel like i can pay you back so you know that if you that do you want to go to one of these resorts if you know what i'm saying so uh, i hope these videos do benefit you and bring you some value and i know this video is going to live forever but here in the now if you want to come say what's up to me in person we're doing a meet and wax october 10th 
in Wheat Ridge, Colorado at Cran Clancy's Irish Pub and Grill, 2 to 7 p.m. That's this Saturday. Come say what up to me in person. You can bring your skis and your snowboards and get them tuned by Michael the Ski Doctor or leave them at home if you don't need them tuned and just come say what's up. Uh, there's gonna be beer, uh, food, all kinds of stuff. So come to the Meat and Wax, 2 to 7, October 10th. Fancy's Irish Pub and Grill in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. That's down in Denver. And I'm really excited to say what's up to so many of you guys in person. Last time, 35 of you showed up. The last plug is my Instagram. Go follow my Instagram. A lot of these trips, I post the stories of the trip and how fun it was. And uh, I might not vlog the travel out there, but you can see it on my Instagram. I almost make like an Instagram vlog on the stories, as well as I'm posting a ton of content on like just tricks or me, how I'm feeling personally. It's a lot of bonus content. So make sure you follow my Instagram. And if you snag any of the merch, tag me on there too. I'll give you gear and sticker shout outs. All right, Team Up Gals, I, I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So with that Team Up Gals, as always, thanks for watching slash reviewing the resort with me today. And as always, thanks for thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion, yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no, no. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no cliffhanger.